greetings in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So wonderful, uh, a beautiful Sunday morning that we can uh, share with one another the power, the loving, and the availability of the mercy of God in our life. So I take this time to, to greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Without any further ado, let us welcome the Holy Spirit by raising your right hand. Say it with me. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in Jesus' name. Two, three. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in Jesus' name. Magandua tali o bekinda bakitugan mataka ni singa ni nai and na koko mana ni aday chisu bikanda na turanga na marama thorbo na wane lewa and na mataka ni singa ni nai. Sana itini kabani nonda banua watala kina na tikina nduna nrao diyo sa ulga lima sana tala ni ngule dhabi na be koro baga biti nduna undolu nduna nrao diyo sa ulga tolu we koro ni banu ni dhaka dhaka sana be koro li lebu Wanu ni bi bagai balai taki kan? Itu kita bawa ngalala. Aku sabar kan bulat tu gaya ni. Hendak matakan ni segan ini dah. Hendak kau kau mana ni ada cisu. Live itu kau mana segan tamu ni kuat. Hendak my television, se my TV, Facebook page, se kau sarap itu kau mana New Methodist Christian Fellowship Facebook page. Aku sabar. Tahu itu kau nangono bi nangono. Mau weekend apa kita lepas kan dua. Hendak segan bi nangono ni kuat. I take this time to welcome all our uh, Non-Itoke uh, speakers that you normally watch this program on television, my TV, 8 to 9, we call it the power in the word. It's an honor, it's a privilege to welcome you in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not forgetting to uh, say a welcome to our Banua, uh, Matan to uh, Kumbuna and Matan to Mbremasanga, Matan to Vivekani na Tobata. The leaders of our nation, in the government, I take this time to welcome uh, our leaders, uh, the Excellency, the Mr. President, the Honorable Mr. Prime Minister, and all the ministers, assistant ministers, not forgetting the permanent secretaries and all the parliamentarian on all sides, political party. We take this time to welcome you, our leaders in the government, in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not forgetting those of you uh, leading our our church denomination, the Methodist Church in Fiji and Rotuma, the Seventh-day Adventists, not forgetting the, the Catholic Church uh, from the Archbishop and all the fathers and all the Wagabubuli. We take this time to welcome you in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not forgetting the Salvation Army, the Presbyterian, um, the Anglican, the Gospel, and also um, not forgetting the the Brotherhood of Pentecostal Movement, the CMF, the All Nation, Assemblies of God, the other Pentecostal uh, small churches that I don't mention your name, I take this time to welcome you all in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now I say hello and welcome to New Methodist Christian Fellowship. And I believe we were on uh, the winning edge uh, uh, discussion or lesson last night. Hallelujah during our virtual conference, all of uh, you in Europe and uh, not forgetting Australia and New Zealand and the Pacific uh, nation, we take this time to welcome you. In Fiji, Nimbula Benaka. Now we are because we are restricted to family worship. Hallelujah. I take this time to welcome you all in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Power in the word. Remember the power in the word. Only on Sunday we live. But from Monday to Saturday, there's always a program on my TV and also on my TV Facebook and also New Methodist Christian Fellowship. So three platforms that you can watch power in the word. Walu kinadiwa na koko wa nibose ni kalo. Enda mi mataka moniti kina moniti. Tu siti kina tu siti. Kapakatala kina singatambu kina singatambu. Power in the word 8 to 9. You can watch it on my television. You can watch it on my television Facebook. Or you can watch it on New Methodist Christian Fellowship Facebook page. We can the Telangan and the Saraba, Nindo replay and Radio Fiji One, Nando Moiviti, Sonangon and the Wakatangitaki and Walu and Ziwakinatini every Sunday morning, 9 to 10, the Chisune Walini Langa program. So we can the Saraba and Otina. Lima na tini galima na minute na kavi. There is two program for New Methodists in the Radio Fiji One, Domiviti, nine to ten, and also 
quarter past five to quarter past six every Sunday. And I believe the more we hear the word of God, especially this time, the time that we are going through challenging and uh, life will not be easy, but uh, we are rest assured that we have the word of God. When the devil uh, come to Jesus and ask Jesus, if you really the son of God, then tell these stones to turn into bread. Jesus said, it is written. It is written, he quoted Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, that man does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceedeth from God's mouth. Hallelujah. Imagine what Jesus said that is still powerful today, that man does not live on bread alone. When we talk about bread alone, we are talking about the physical needs, the physical activities that we need in our body, the basic needs of our body. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, man does not live on bread alone. As we all know that we have three components to you. You see me, you only see one. You don't see the two thirds of me. The one that you see on the screen is only one third. And that one third that you can see live on bread. Hallelujah. But the two thirds of me that you don't see, we live on the word. That's why Jesus, man does not live on bread alone. We need bread but it's two-third of you, two-third of me, that we live on the Word of God. And that's why sometimes we grow old in age, but we're still small and uh, uh, become a child or still have a childish attitude because we are not feeding on what the two-thirds of you that's supposed to feed on, and that is the Word of God. Your body, my body, we feed on bread, on the physical things, for us to grow, to get matured. We go for education. But the other two, your spirit and your, your soul feeds on the word of God. And that's why when you grow in this life, you look uh, aging when you're 50 or 60 or 70. But your spirit, your soul is very young. It's just still like a child because it's not feeding from the word. Because the word of God will make you mature and you think differently. And the things that you say your mind, your attitude, your vision will be very matured. You are ready for next life. Remember this body only up to the grave, soil to soil, sand to sand, and dust to dust. But the spirit man will stand before God. And that's why we need the power in the word of God every morning like this from 8 to 9. Hallelujah. This morning I will talk on the winning edge. Hallelujah. Winning edge. Remember we are wired... To succeed. The Bible says I can do all things in Christ Jesus who has strengthened me. Regardless of what you do in life you're supposed to succeed. We are on a winning team. Jesus said I already conquer the world. Don't worry about the world. I already conquer the world. There is only one man that conquer the world and that is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Pharaoh tried. Nebuchadnezzar tried. King Asperus tried. King Cyrus tried, Alexander the Great tried it, a lot of people they tried, but they all failed. Only one person that conquered the world and still going today and his kingdom will come and that is Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm standing here, my friend, for a Bible study uh, this morning. I want you to focus on your winning mentality, the winning edge, the winning attitude. Because Jesus said, hallelujah. Don't worry about the world. You go into the world, you conquer the world because I already conquer the world. A pistol, Paul said, the power of God that is within you has the power to go into the world and conquer the world. The power within you is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. The power that we have, the power that you have in Jesus because you surrender your life to Jesus Christ and accept Jesus as your personal savior. Niko sa dingo mi chisu me no muturanga me no mi bangambula. Sa solibiko na lewa. Ninge wara kana elo tambu ke solibiko na kokoa. Jesus Christ through his word you have the authority. And the Holy Spirit comes. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes then you shall receive power. Power to what? Power to minister, power to testify. Power to say to the world that there is power in God. 
So you are walking power. You are walking dynamite. You are walking example of the God that you serve. That you are the head, never the tail. Whatever comes through this life, you are ready to tackle it in every direction. Left, right, and center. From above, from beneath, from the front, or from the back. Why? Because you have the power of God within you. So as you walk with God, you're not supposed to be a loser. Hallelujah. The Bible says, remember, when God created man in the beginning, three things was given to him. Number one, to have the image of God. Number two, to have the likeness of God. And number three, to have dominion over everything that was created. Most of the time we're missing the number three. That we are called, we are created, God himself said. For him to have dominion, authority over everything that was created. And the Bible says, so man was given, God blessed them to multiply, to subdue, to take control, and to manage. If you read Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, 27, 28, then you will know who you are when you come to God. When God is with you, who shall be against you? When God is on your side, who shall be on the other side? So we have the winning mentality, whatever you touch shall prosper. Whatever you do shall prosper shall come to pass. So you become a person of God's workmanship in this planet. Through you, God will bless other people. Through you, other people, your neighbors, your friends will be blessed because you are walking with the power of God within you. The power that conquers the world. Remember, the world is full of darkness. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, if I can read to finally my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, the powers, the ruler of this darkness and the fallen and the fallen wicked angels. Hallelujah. So in this life, we are, there, there, there is a battle going on. There is a fight going on. You either stand with the devil, power of darkness, or you stand with God. You pick and choose. But I'm here as a voice of God to you. After this life, there is a greater life that we will live in Christ. So those that surrender their life to Jesus Christ, and accept him as their personal savior and king and lord and master. Hallelujah. And their friend and their everything. Remember, that is the kingdom walking. That you no, lo no longer you that is alive. Christ that is alive in you. You know, you can, you can make a, cr uh, a dead person cry or laugh. Why? Because he doesn't have any feeling. So when you walk with God. You are not caught up by the emotion of this world. You are very centered and focused on the things of God. So when I'm talking about the winning edge, hallelujah, I'm talking about the attitude that we have to face in this life. Whatever areas of life that you live, you are on a winning edge. You are always come out a victorious in Jesus. There's a victory always in you. Because you are not a loser. The losers, they don't throw in their towel. The losers, they don't turn around and quit. Are you a, a person that is full of ex excuses, complain, nagging attitude? That means you are not the winning edge. I want to challenge our life today. Last night, we were talking to all the senior pastors and the pastors uh, around the globe in our Zoom and we were talking to them the winning mentality. The winning mentality. When you have God in you and you put God into your life, then you must work on your mind because your mind is the battlefield of the devil. You receive Jesus Christ in your heart as your personal savior. But be careful of your mind because your mind works on what you hear, what you see, what you touch, what you feel, what you taste, what you smell. Those five senses, they will work on your mind. And that's why it's difficult for people to work on their mind and working with God. 
Because they are walking by sight. They are not walking by faith. When you walk with God, you walk by faith, not by sight. God said to Moses, go to the other side. Take my people and go to Canaan. The land that I promised their, their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They came and there was a desert. They cry out. They came and there was the Red Sea. See, the winning mentality, you are not controlled by the situation around you. The winning edge, you are not taken up by the barriers or the problems in front of you. You continue to focus on God and his word. You are not looking at the problem in front of you. You are depending on God behind you. I remember in 1 Samuel chapter 17, you know the story about David. Hallelujah. A wonderful story. While people were commending, while people were talking on how great Goliath, a giant, a powerful man, just look at his javelin, just look at his sword. What about his shield? Even somebody just carrying his shield. We call it Amabera. And everybody talking about how big, how powerful this man Goliath. When they asked David, David saw a heathen, uncircumcised. Hallelujah. What a comparison. Now, I will put it to our lesson today. Winning edge. When you see the problem in front of you, what are you saying? Because what you say is what you will do. And what you say comes from your mind. And if your mind is negative, your word will be negative. And you are dwelling on the wrong place. And for us in Fiji, every one of us that we are watching this program, the winning ends. I said last week that I will speak today on the five things that you compare the fighting against COVID-19 and walking with God. Hallelujah. Fighting against COVID-19. There are five things that we heard so many times. Number one, the contaminate, the containment area. Number two, the mask on. Number three, the social distancing. Number four, the washing of hands. Number five, and the most important one, the COVID vaccines. That most of the people, they speak negative about it. So I, as promised last week, and I was asking God to assist me so I can share with you, we are fighting against COVID-19. We are in a battle. So we must have the winning edge. A lot of negatives are going around. A lot of negative finger pointing, blaming games that are going on from the parliament right up to those that are sweeping the street of Suba. Everybody that's just talking about negative and negative and negative. Let's talk about positive. Let's talk about that we are on the winning side. Our leader is on the, the leading, leading winner. That he survived what we call the most pandemic Dangerous pandemic, the most sorrowful pandemic, when he was murdered on the cross about 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. So I want to put to you today, as we fight against COVID-19, we need to have winning mentality, positive attitude. And we have to play our part. Everyone to play their part. Those in the village, those in settlements, those in housing authorities, those that are working, those on the street, those that are watching television, those that are listening to the radio, regardless where you are, we need to have a winning mentality because we have a battle on in front of us. I remember preaching on the first day of this year. My God is with me. Bring it on. And I still confess and maintain when your God is with you, who shall be against you? When God is on your side, who shall be on the other side? So we must have a winning mentality. Those that are leading the nation, those that are leading the frontliners, the 
medical people and those uh, essential servers that are in support. Let's have a winning edge, a winning mentality for us to contain this virus. Even though nearly every day is past 20, sometimes past 30, every day. Last year, when it's one or two, everybody prepared, everybody talk about, it, everybody worried. But today, it's about 20, 30 or more. One day it was 46, the highest. But you have a winning side. You have a winning mentality. Why? Because Jesus is a winner man. And I want to go to this detail as uh, we read. Finally, my brethren, hallelujah. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, and a spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, 10, 11, and 12. So there is a battle on. Whether you like it or not, you are in a battle. Now, it, it's up to you which side that you are on. You can go to church, but you are on the side of the devil. Because you are doing the wicked thing. You are swearing, you are drinking, committing adultery, fornication, stealing, swearing. That means you, you are on the devil's side. Hallelujah. There, there, is, there is a battle going on right now. Just like the COVID-19, there is a battle going on right now. And every day we want an update from the medical department. So we will go to the five things. Hallelujah. Number one, containment area. Containment area. Praise the name of Jesus. Containment area are the area that they lock down. Because you are required to stay safe. So the more we have a containment area or special area to lock down because we want people to be in the safe place. I remember the lesson on your place matters. Where you dwell matters. And that's why they want to contain the disease. They lock down this area. So your place is safe. You are not in the con containment area. So we put them aside. We put them uh, to, to stop so the virus will not move. Now, God wants us to, to go into our containment area. Psalm 91, the Bible says, that those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide by the shadow of Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and the pestilence and the precious pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wing you shall take refuge. See, when you're in a right place, God will seal, God will cover, God will protect. And that's why when we fight in the physical containment area, so the disease will not spread. You know, if only you know that God wants you to stay in a safe area. Uncontainment area. So you can be safe. So the virus of the evil one, the, the virus from the devil, the virus from hell, not to touch you. It depends where you dwell. Hallelujah. The Bible says those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. They shall abide. They shall abide by the shadow of God Almighty. Hallelujah. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. You will be bold. You will be confident. It is, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And from the pestilence, he shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wing, you shall take refuge. His tooth will be your shield and your battle. 
You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste on noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you or near your side. Only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge. Even the most are your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest your dust your foot against the stone. You shall turn upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. You will step on scorpions and snakes. There is no enemy that will come against you, including the pestilence. Why? Because your dwelling place, your containment area. That's why you need to be careful where you go and dwell. We have a lockdown or we have a curfew from 6 p.m. to 4 a.m. So you stay put. You stay home. Why? Because the virus out there. Are you afraid of the virus 19, COVID-19? And not afraid of the evil one, the sinful life. Jesus said, do not be afraid for the one that killed the flesh. But you should be afraid for the one that killed the flesh and put the soul into the fire furnace in hell. We are so afraid. Uh, we, are, we, we are so worried. There is a commotion going on. A pointing finger and blaming game because people are afraid of COVID-19. Of course we should. But do you afraid of the evil things that you are doing? Hallelujah. That there is no oxygen will give you life. That the life in hell will forever and ever 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 and ever. And if you are afraid of COVID-19, you should be more afraid of the evil things that you are doing. Hallelujah. Containment area. All this thing is derived from, from the Bible because it is from the Alpha to the Omega, from the beginning to the end. The, the mind of man created by God. So whatever God put into the mind of man, you have the ability to tackle your tomorrow. Regardless of pandemic, regardless of the destruction, God already wire into us to rise again. That we will rise again. Not because of us. Because of the wiring and the calling of God in our life. That you become a winner. That you become uh, a person that can do all things in Christ Jesus. We are already blessed from our mother's womb. Because from God we came. And God, we will go back to after this life. And every one of us, friends, brothers and sisters, every one of us will be standing before God. And we are accountable to everything that we are doing. Containment area. Some people, they crossing the containment area. Issues in the newspapers, issues in the news, television and radio. Because people are crossing. And even the police are asking the public, remain in your containment area. Or remain where you're supposed to remain. Why? Because the virus is not seen by naked eyes. It takes time, even up to 14 days, that can show symptoms. What about the evil that you're doing? What about the evil things? That the devil is using you to be a vessel, to be his agent in this world. Remember, your dwelling place, your place matters. Because in your place, God will release to you your power, your provision, your protection, his presence into your life. Hallelujah. 
when we talk about containment, containment area, we are talking about the area that we're supposed to be limited from the left, from the right, or from the front at the back. There is an area that we're not supposed to go over that takes a lot of obedience. A lot of people are arrested and becoming a law. It's becoming a law at the moment. If you don't know, it's becoming a law. God already put his areas into our life. So you should have a dwelling place of God. So you can safeguard yourself, your family, your people, especially your children, from the areas. You put them the boundaries. There are boundaries of God. We call it a no-go zone. Because if you go past, if you disobey, then the virus outside will come onto you. And imagine if the virus outside comes into you, your whole family will be contaminated. There are places that are already contaminated. They are also on the full lockdown at the moment around Insuwa. No, sorry, Corridor. I'm sharing this physical fight to what we are going through in the spirit because they are exactly the same. And I believe it's a, a warning, a teaching, something that we need to understand in our spirit. Because we take sin very lightly. We call sin lawbreakers. Uh, we, we talk about criminal activities. According to the Bible, that's not criminal activities. That's sin. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. And that's how God look at us. You either on the left or you on the right. You either black or white. You can't sitting on the fence. There is no sitting on the fence. There is no place on the fence. You will either be with the devil or with God. So this morning, the winning edge, which who you are, because you are on the winning side, that God put into you from your mom's womb, from the time that you are conceived, God already knew you. God already knew you and ordained you. Jeremiah 29, 11, famous Bible verse, so many times we share it, even our children, in every church, in every denomination. I alone know the plan I have for you. That means before you come into this world, God has a plan for you. You can have your plan, your parents can have your plan, other people, your friends can have your plan, but God has a plan. And the Bible says, I alone know the plan I have for you, the plan to prosper you and never to harm you. Do you know when I'm talking about the winning edge, that one of the winning edge is prosperity? Prosperous? Hallelujah. God wants us to prosper us in whatever area of our life. Whether we stay in the village, we are fishermen, or maybe we are farmer. Maybe we're just a normal villager or we come to town and work in the urban areas as teachers, as doctors, as pilot, as a businessman. In every areas of our life, God said, I alone know the plan I have for you. And the plan that I have for you is to prosper you, never to harm you. So if you are going the zigzag of this life, the up and down of this life, remember that God's plan is to prosper you and never to harm you. Oh, glory to God. So whether you are listening, having breakfast or listening that you're preparing for church service or you're listening, you're sitting with your family, with your children. Remember, the plan of God is to prosper you. Regardless what you're facing today, that's only a hiccup along the way. It's, not, it's just a chapter of a book. But your life, God has a plan for you to prosper you, never to harm you. So... If God wants to prosper you, that's why he limited where you go. He limited your freedom. He limited the things that you want to do. Your flesh will be attracted to the world because your flesh is from the world, but your spirit is from God. So don't allow your flesh to override because the works of the flesh is sin, debauchery, adultery, fornication, stealing, 
drunkenness, envy and jealousy, fighting. Those are the lust of the flesh. But when you have the spirit in you, it brings love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness, happiness, faith, and discipline in God. Hallelujah. Why? Because God has a plan for you to prosper you. So when we talk about a winning edge, every one of us are entitled to the winning edge because we surrender our life to Jesus Christ and we are with the winning team. Because the winning commander is with us. The commander that met Joshua. I remember when Joshua came and met this commander and this commander was ready and Joshua knew he's a commander of the Israel and he's the commander on the other side. And Joshua asked him, are you with us or are you with them? And the commander of God said, I'm neither with them and I'm nor with you. The Bible says, then Joshua fell flat on his face. Flat on his face. Namatana or general or commander azuba tukinangele. Hallelujah. Anga tu noga. Nadaba e kaya nonguturanga. Vi kaya na nomuni tamata. Joshua, take off your sandals because you are standing on a holy ground. Do you know that God was once limited into our life so we are not contaminated by the things outside? Nakaira, baka tukaki na namata intu. Me maru ina bunongo, maru ina bunongo. Me bataki munikoso, me bataki nandali. Me bataka na sona bunu okura lockdown, lockdown tikungo. Maledaba, me kaku ni toso na virus. So the rest of the people can remain safe. So bring it to the spiritual that I'm talking about, the spiritual battle that we are talking about. You need to limit your place. There is a place that you need to stay in and make that place a dwelling place of God. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, who, who, who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide by the shadow of Almighty. You know when Peter and John walk through the street of Jerusalem, the Bible says their shadow healed the people on the road. People would just come and lie down on the road. And the shadow of Peter and John healed the people. Do you know what? Because they are dwelling in the secret place. And the shadow of God Almighty, shadow, their shadow. So the people that are healed, are healed from the shadow of God Almighty. The shadow of God Almighty. Chapter 2, our two sages, Sotabaki, and Alotabu. Sange Lago, Lutu, my beer, and Alotabu. To Sange Rawat and Kaukoa. The healing of the sick. The casting of the demons, the miracle, the signs and wonders. So many things happening in the first church. And the church started to grow to thousands and thousands in Jerusalem. The very city that they crucified Jesus. Hallelujah. A Wasatigo and a containment area. I'm speaking on that area that is put aside to lock down the evil thing. So we are comparing the contentment area in the physical and the contentment area in the spiritual world. Kenny Karua, the mask on. Hallelujah. I'll go to take my mask. Every time I go outside, a mask on. Hallelujah. Mask on. The mask is taro na usumu. Mask on. How many? Maro etu na usumu. Maro etu na udumu. Mask on. Mask on. You want good life? Psalm 34, 12 to 14. Who is the man who desires life? You want good life? And loves many days that he may see his good. Are you that person? Keep your tongue from evil. And your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Are you that Keyboard warriors. Hallelujah. 
Et son gosse a son gosse a son gosse a son gosse a Hallelujah. Mascon. In the secular world, in the world, the Ministry of Health and put in by our parliamentarian, they approved it a few days ago. So it's become a law of this nation during this time that you must go on when you're outside or when you are in a public transport. Must go on. Why? Na mate na indua me kuni lago maibiko, kei na nomu mate me kuni lago maindua. So many sickness it's in our heart and comes through our mouth, our tongue, our lips. Tapi kan ibu tamu, dia sabi bina kata nambula, kau sabi bina kata nangau nabi naka. Who is the man who desires life? I want, I want life. I don't just want to struggle through. I want life, life abundantly. I love, I love good life, so I can be a source of blessing to people around me. My body will be strong. My, my words will be clear. My eyes will be sharp. My ears. Will hear. I want my body. I want good body. I want strong body. So I continue to do the will of God in my life. And loves many days that he may see good. We are telling the Kavinaka. I want to see good in my life. I want to see good in my children's life. I want to see good in my grandchildren's life. I want to see good in my family. I want to see good in New Methodist Christian Fellowship. I want to see good in all senior pastors. I want to see good in their family. All the Taltala and all the Randini, all the Gassin Lotu. I want all the young people, the children, the babies of New Methodist. I want them good life. I want the people that are listening today, serving the nation of Fiji, 14 provinces. And the Tikinas, the district of 195 and 1,193 villages. I want them to receive good life. But remember, if you don't put on your mask, maroroe na ngusumu, maroroe na ememu. Hallelujah. Na isele wawu, sa oti mbeka na ngone ni kantamata, sa oti mbeka na ngone ni cannibalism, waka ndomo mbula na ngusu, waka ndomo mbula na yame, tu iburubure ni kwa, waka wosibi na ndomo noviti. Mask on. Mask on. Who wants to see good life? Who want to see good days? Keep your tongue from evil. Hey, many. So, they tell no lasso. So, they tell no zag. Oh, Bagaburea. The Numa and Ella Nikosu no Mumbula. Econandora Rawa. No Mumate and Matera Rawa. Kona Kaila Tunga, Kona Ositunga. You will go through agony and pain. Hallelujah. When we disappear from this life and go to another life, it's, a, it's supposed to be a celebration. I remember most of the time in the village, um, our grandmother is about to pass on. Uh, she's asking for the bakatawa. Or the time it was a bakabubuli. Before the bakatawa, we have the bakabubuli, and then we have the bakatawa, and then we have the taltala. So the bakabubuli will come. Yeah, uh, sabagay be no. Then our grandfather or our grandmother, some might have told you, some have got to turn bula, some have got to be able to turn on one, some have got to be able to turn, some have got to be able to turn back and forth. But that's what we do. We are talking. Some have got to be able to turn. We are talking about how we are going to be able to turn. We are talking about how we are going to be able to turn. I feel clean. I feel good. I'm just want to say goodbye to everyone. And after that, some have got to be able to pray over. What is happening today? Hallelujah. People crying in agony. People crying at home. People crying in hospital. Why? Mouth. Our lips. Our tongue. We're supposed to have a, a peaceful passing on. Hallelujah. Today there's a lot of passing on in different cases, in different scenarios. We're supposed to have a, a good passing on. When we pass on from Namukelau and we pass on to Suba, getting to secondary education, our mothers and our aunties, they will be standing on the seesaw, waving their towel, waving their sulbakatonga. We are passing on to Suba to another chapter of our life to come and continue with our education in secondary school. When we finish the secondary school, we have a, a ceremony in every secondary school because people are either joining the workforce or going to tertiary education university. The passing on. There is always a good, a smooth transition on this life. What about?
going into the next life. Are you ready for a peaceful passing over? Or you don't know when? You are scared that you may go to sleep and never say goodbye to your loved one. Or some people, they, they have an accident on the road or in the sea or in the rugby field or in the battlefield. Our passing on is not clear. Hallelujah. Be careful. Sami says, who is the man who desires life? Are you that man who desires life? And who loves many days that he may see good? You want to see good days? Keep your tongue from evil. And your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and go and do good and seek peace and pursue it. Hallelujah. Also in Ephesians chapter 5, 3 and 4, the Bible says, But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you. Sino don't maybe tell what I think on a cabra sila. Those dirty words, those dirty jakes. Hallelujah. As it is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor cost jutting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. So our mouth and our tongue, or our lips and our tongue, our mouth shall be full of praises and thanksgiving. Our mouth must be full of praising and thanksgiving. What is our mouth? The combination of our tongue and our lips. These two, they pronounce the word and they throw it out. Hallelujah. You know, most of the time, we eat okay. We use our, our cultural or traditional connection. Hallelujah. So we can swear. So we can speak down or spoil people around us. Be careful. You want to see good days? You want to see long life? Long life and good days. Be careful of your mouth. That means your mouth which is your lips, must not speak deceit. Hallelujah. Changing, changing the story to make it like it's true when it's false. Creating stories, slandering, bickering, gossiping. Hallelujah. And your tongue not to speak evil. You run down people's life in a social media or in a phone or email, whatever platform that you're using. Hallelujah. No wonder your marriage is not working. No wonder your children is not growing up. No wonder of the no wonder because a lot of wondering. I want to challenge our life today. You see the background of those big mouth. You see the result, their family, their children. For those, they are busy body about other people. Hallelujah. Check what they have done, achieved. What about their family? What about their marriage? What about their children? Hallelujah. The Bible is telling us, mask on. Tandola tiko nangarinindalingamu. Tandola tiko nangara ni matam. Gai songo tiko na usumu. Mekako ni lango maikina. Nakasa tu e mata ni alomu. Be careful of the words that you say. Because God is warning us. Who is the man who desires life? And loves many days that he may see good. Keep your tongue from evil. And your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace 
and pursue it. Ephesians 5, 3 and 4. But fornication and all uncleanliness, covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, kabaka sisila, yalo yalo tha, magazine tha, no foolish talking, wosabaka lia lia, na wosalasu, na wosanibi mbutuki, nibi wakadadani, no cause jettings, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. So our mouth, our lips, our tongue should be full of praise. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the evening. Praise Him every day of your life. I'm talking about mask on. Think and hear and listen. Obey and do good. Make your mouth talk less on the things that you do not know. Oh, hallelujah. So many times that we comments, we say things on the things that we do not know. Hallelujah. If somebody come to your home and check your home, somebody check your life, somebody check your personal life. Oh, so many things that we can comment on. Hallelujah. And God is telling us today, those that want good life or see more days, remember your tongue not to speak evil. Remember your lips not to speak lies. You just seek peace. There are people around you. There are people that you can forgive. There are people that you need to contact. There are people around you that you make men's of uh, those uh, strained relationships for years. That's why mask on. Okay. Put on your mask so your ears can hear well, your eyes can see clearly, and your brain can make a right decision because you are hearing right and you are seeing right. Some of the comments that people talk about, some of the things that people talk about, Hallelujah. And in the village, wherever we get together, so many things that we uh, can't mind our own business. Remember, you are bringing curse to your life. You are bringing curse to your marriage. You are bringing curse to your family. You are bringing curse to your home. You are bringing curse, especially to your children. Hallelujah. And that's why we suppose to be focusing on God. Make sure you check your place. Are your place a dwelling place of God? Would, whatever you say, whatever you comment on, uplift people's life, challenging people's life. And I believe whatever I'm sharing from this platform this morning, uplifting somebody, that you are drunken last night and you are having coffee, trying to revive yourself. And maybe somebody that you just separated and you have time just to watch the television. You're just flicking through the wireless platform and you come to channel four. There goes my TV and you see this man speaking to you. And I'm telling you, if you want good life, if you want long days, then be careful the things that you say. Be careful of your tongue. Be careful of your lips because you are only opening more doors into your curses. So shut the door, my friend. Mask on. Mask on. So when you people going out to the street, we were told to put mask on. So when you see people wearing masks, remember this preaching. Remember this teaching that God wants you to speak less. And that's why we have only one mouth. Imagine if you have two mouths. Imagine you have three mouths. Imagine if your wife has two mouths. Imagine if your children at home have two mouths. God wants us to have two ears and two eyes, two hands and two feet so we can work, so we can hear, so we can see double than what we see. Some people, you are just staying at home. Mm, you are staying at home. You are being at home. But the, the mouthful that you have, the things that are coming from your mouth transfer to your fingers. Some of us are keyboard warriors. You have a lot of things to talk about to a lot of people. Hallelujah. Your home, 
your marriage, your life, your work, your achievement, your record. Hallelujah. Stop the spiritual COVID-19. Stop the spiritual virus. I just touched two this morning. Number one, remember your area. Make it a dwelling place of God. Psalm 91, 1 to 13. You have, if you have time this morning, remember that. Number two that I talk on today, mask on. Next week, I'll talk about the social distancing and the washing of hands and the vaccine. I believe that God will put more revelation. So whatever we're going through right now, it'll be very practical in downloading the message that we are receiving today. Hallelujah. We give God the glory, the honor, and the praises this morning. If you want more information on New Methodist Christian Fellowship, you can just send uh, your request on Facebook of New Methodist Christian Fellowship or my TV or uh, see on our page. Hallelujah. For those of you in the Western, thank you very much. Our mission Sunday this week, and we praise God for all the things that you are doing, all the pictures of prep, uh, preparation for this morning. Thank you, Taltalagase. Thank you, Taltala. Continue to check on the people's life out there. There are people struggling, as we mentioned last week and the week before last week. We continue to mention, look after the congregation, look after your neighbors. Not only the people that we go to church together. Look after your neighbor. This is the time to connect to one another. And see that some people are in need. See that some people are crying out. See that some people, they need your hands. This is the time. Hallelujah. And please honor the, the call of God in our life, which is the COVID, spiritual COVID-19. Remember, remember the contaminant area. And remember, mask on. For those in the Western, hallelujah, you are blessed that uh, Momi uh, uh, border is lifted and Nathilau uh, border is lifted and uh, you are free to move around. But be careful of the curfew time and be careful of your moving around. Always stay safe and always continue to be obedient, to be a good citizen. And you are a good Christian. If you are a good Christian, you'll be a good citizen. You'll never break the law of the land because you are a good Christian. The Bible says you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the world. When people see your attitude, they will glorify the God that you serve. We'll see you again at 1030, God of our nation. will be the ending of uh, the virtual conference with uh, our overseas counterpart. So look forward to 1030. From the studio here in Turek in Suba, we say thank you very much. And please be with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray over your people. Thank you for the lesson today. Even though we are facing the COVID-19 in the physical, we are also facing in the spiritual. We thank you, Father God, for the lesson that you place in my heart to share to the people of Fiji. We now will to Ranga, na bonu kipa mitiko kina bimbi mitiko kina na klo, kina beauty ko na 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 gangara uni ni ningusu kina uzu. We now will to Ranga the mask on that we will not cause other people the spiritual uh, virus into their life. Thank you, Father God, as I release your power, your anointing. Thank you, Father God, for the blessing in people's life. Right now, right now, right now. People will be blessed. People will be healed. Their wealth, their health. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen and Amen. Holy Spirit, we thank you in Jesus' name. Jesus is Lord. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. From here to you, have a wonderful Sunday in Jesus' name.